name for the record is Alicia Ongoya. I'll be making the governor's final submissions. Mr. Speaker, sir, before I delve into the substantive part of my submissions, and because looking at the program of this house, this may be the last time I'm standing here to address on this matter, allow me with great humility to begin by thanking you, Mr. Speaker, and the distinguished senators who have given us audience despite the great time constraints that we have had to go through in making this case. I'll be failing in my responsibility for courtesy if I didn't thank the administrative staff, the secretariat staff of this Senate, who have given us significant support, both within this house and in the corridors of this precinct, as we found our way around. Mr. Speaker, sir, at this juncture, allow me to proceed to the more substantive parts of the governor's closing submissions. Allow me to begin by pointing out that as a young Christian fellowshipping at Israve Church of God deep in Vihiga County, and as a middle-aged Christian fellowshipping somewhere in Amalemba Church of God in Kakamega County, I have gathered some enduring lessons from scripture, and I would start by drawing inspiration from those lessons. The wise man who authored the book of Proverbs at chapter 18, verse 17, guides us as follows when we are confronted with matters such as this. In a lawsuit, the first to speak seems right until someone comes forward to cross-examine him. That ecclesiastical wisdom has found pragmatic rendition in these proceedings as I will demonstrate shortly. Mr. Speaker, sir, the governor was presented in the opening remarks by the County Assembly's Council to this assembly, for lack of a better word, as some form of scoundrel. Fortunately, in this August House, both parties have had an opportunity to present documentary and electronic evidence. Mr. Speaker, sir, distinguished senators, when the history of this attempted impeachment of the governor of Meru County, Her Excellency Honorable Bokawira Mwangaza, shall be authored, one word will be repeated in that historical text. That word is a Meru word, Kibiri. I'm told in its innocence, it is a stick that is used to stir porridge. Sadly, in that historical text that I've alluded to, that word will have no aura of innocence. I beg to pose the following questions to the hearts, the minds, and the conscience of these distinguished senators. Are we in making a decision this evening, going to dignify the Kibiri movement that we have seen today by impeaching this governor? Are we, honorable distinguished senators, going to dignify the acts of honorable Mpuru Waburi that you had occasion to watch today live by impeaching this governor. Honorable Senators, are we today 
going to dignify the act of the honorable member for Buri constituency that we have seen today supporting the other acts of Mpuri Aburi that you had observed by impeaching this governor. Are we going to dignify the acts of the deputy governor for Meru County openly and in the company of the young people of this country that we ought to give proper moral guidance calling a governor a prostitute? Are we going to dignify that person by impeaching this governor? The governor has been accused of being a leader who disrespects other leaders. Video clips of the alleged disrespect have allegedly been played here, including a song, Wenye Wivu Wajinyonge. On the other hand, the governor has demonstrated to you the scenes that have been committed against her by those very leaders she is accused of disrespecting. Distinguished senators, in good conscience, are you going to vote that this governor is a greater sinner than she has been sinned against? In good conscience. How many of us can reconcile our conscience, distinguished senators, with the fact that it is the men you saw today uttering the words you saw them utter and projecting the actions that you saw them project as against the governor that have actually come to this house to complain against that governor? I've heard of the claim of pots calling kettle black. I never knew in my living history I would come across a pragmatic rendition of what that means. Today was my answer. I invite you to have that reflection, distinguished senators. I have asked myself, I invite these distinguished senators to ask themselves, Mr. Speaker, sir, where did these leaders get the moral high ground to invite this house in view of the sins that they have committed against the governor to find that the governor has sinned against them? Distinguished senators, technology has been deployed in these proceedings. We are beaming these proceedings live to the whole world by medium that will preserve them to eternity. How shall the members of this house, individually and collectively, account to their children and children's children that they ever dignified the acts of these people who have leveled a war against the governor by confirming the impeachment of the governor. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to the peace of our conscience to make a decision that takes that into account. Choices have consequences. Also, it is a truism. By impeaching this governor, if you so decide, the logical consequence is that that person you saw chanting with the young Mer men of Meru, calling the governor a prostitute, would rise to the office of governor. Is that the desirable outcome you want out of your decision this evening, distinguished senators? Members of the county assembly have brought the governor here. I speak the governor's heart. We do not begrudge them. They have the power to do that. They have exercised that power. 
have they rightly exercised that power? Distinguished senators, that decision lies in your hand. You are told that the governor did not present the evidence that she has given before you to the county assembly. Fortunately, this house is a house of record. Fortunately, Mr. Speaker, you have fantastic rules of procedure that of course we can make better as we have seen. And, and I would strongly recommend, hoping time will permit, that we relook at the timelines for impeachment of governors if we have to do absolute justice in terms of filings, in terms of argument of the case. These are reform issues because we are in continuous improvement as a society. But putting all the factors on the scale, we have done well in presenting some records before October 2023. If you turn with me to page 146, you will see this conversation. Elias Mutuma, advocate for the governor, says, mine will be brief, but I will not proceed until we are given a ruling on the two issues raised by my seniors. We seek direction on how to table the evidence that we have and how we will get a ruling on the public participation. The governor is pleading to be given a chance to table her evidence. The speaker, Honorable Ayub Bundi, says when your brother Omari was speaking, he mentioned a difference between honorable members and your team. He stated that he knows the division in this house and he cannot step on the other side. Anything you'd like to table in this house must go to the House Business Committee. You cannot do it when you're on that side. You must be on the side where the members are. I was wondering, Mr. Speaker, sir, how was Mr. Mutuma possibly supposed to get to the side where the members are? Was he supposed to organize a mini election in Meru County, become elected a senator for the temporary purpose of participating in these proceedings? I, I don't know. I am a career learner and I learn every day. It is only allowed for honorable members. We are being told only honorable members are allowed to table evidence. You are not allowed to table evidence. We are going to make a reference to the Hansard systems because everything that you talk is being captured. You can proceed as a speaker. The speaker, we don't begrudge him. He had power to make a ruling. Mr. Speaker, just as you have power to make rulings here. Did he use that power correctly? That is the question I pose to the conscience of the men and women bestowed with the adua's responsibility of protecting devolved governance in this country, sitting in this house as distinguished senators. The conversation continues with Elias Mutuma advocate for the governor making an argument. My understanding therefore is that we will not lay the evidence that we have. The speaker answers him, how will you table it Mr. Mutuma? Mutuma is asking him, you are the presiding officer in this house. Guide me on how to table. Mr. Mutuma is being challenged. How will you do it? You are not an MCA. That's why MCS enter through the main door and you entered through the back door. This was no longer differentiation. This was apartheid. Discrimination on the basis of the door you entered through. Whoever entered through the main door had a chance to table evidence. Whoever entered through any other door was denied a right to table evidence. Mr. Mutuma, exercising the persistence of a lawyer that we teach in law schools, continues. My hope is, is now, now pleading hope, 
My hope is that you will guide me on how we will lay the evidence that we have. Because I'm a stranger in this house. The speaker answers him, we are going to rely on the Hansard system. As you talk, be aware that you are giving your evidence. He says, in desperation, well guided, a very well trained lawyer. Whether you agree or disagree with the judge, you say most obliged. Well guided. May we then have a ruling before we proceed. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, distinguished senators, believe me or not, it is this assembly that has come here to ask you why didn't they table their evidence before the assembly? We may agree or disagree with the governor on many things. We owe her a moral duty to be fair to her. The governor has been unfairly treated by the county assembly of Meru, as demonstrated by the county assembly's own records. And that is why we are here. You'll be told, you've been told, in cross-examination, there are other women out there, Embu, Homa Bay, Nakuru, Kirinyaga, are they also facing discrimination? Don't throw the gender card here. That's what the governor has been told in your hearing. Mr. Speaker, sir, distinguished senators, those things were said to the person you saw with your own eyes and felt with all your other senses, including the sense of hearing, being told what was going to be done to her by the Kipiri. Those things, those questions. One day, 